it's, uh, it's really a, a pleasure. Thanks to the organizer. I was ready to say it is a pleasure to be in Chennai again, but uh, okay, this will be for the next time. So in any case, thank you very much. And um, so I'm going to speak, when I say cubes, I mean uh, cubes of uh, non-negative uh, non uh, integers. Okay, so it started uh, early August uh, this, uh, this year, Alto Alkan, with a computer scientist in uh, Istanbul, attracted the attention of François Engar, Bernard Landreau, and myself on a sequence in, the, in Sloan's project, A267414. And it is a sequence which at that time stopped at 21 and now goes up to uh, 50, 59 with a few holes uh, in it. Uh, one hole in uh, 56. And uh, this sequence is the, the set of integers n for which we know that n factorial is the sum of three cubes. And each time it provides a, such a decomposition. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. So we were really surprised because as we know, it is not too difficult to see that uh, all the integers cannot be sum of three cubes. By the way, we don't even know whether there is a positive density of uh, integer which are sum of three cubes. But uh, it's easy to see that you have at most one sixth of the integer which are sum of, si of, six, of uh, three cubes because you look at all the representation up to x and uh, this is done with cubes which are not larger than x and with three of them the total number of possibility is x but you have several that will come together because if the three summons are different, which is the major case, then a triple uh, will give you uh, redundancy, uh, an integer, which is the sum will be also the sum of the, the one when you uh, uh, turn them. So the, um, the, this was, uh, this was our, our first surprise with that, because we know even a bit better than one six, we know that the cardinality of n, which are sum of, of three cubes, cannot be larger than 0 0.1186. Okay. So uh, there was also a, a second remark that uh, we have no useful algorithm for testing whether an integer larger than 10 to the 30 or so is a sum of three cubes. But we have, for example, 55 factorial which is larger than 10 to the 73. So what is the trick? The trick is the following, that if you take this number, a number with 20, 27 decimal digits, this number, you can run an algorithm showing that it is a sum of three cubes. There is no very quick algorithm for testing whether an integer is a sum of three cubes. Basically, it is the trivial algorithm, you take a pair of cubes and uh, you look at the sum and you see whether n minus this is a cube itself. There is a slight improvement that has been done by Booker. Maybe I said something about the work of Booker. Uh, at, recently has been done by Booker last year, uh, uh, which is to remark that uh, if uh, a sum of two cubes, x cubed plus y cubed is divisible by x plus y. And so you can use this to slightly accelerate the, the algorithm. However, this is more or less the, the, the maximum of what we can do. You see this uh, 10, 10 to the 10 to the 13. So, uh, okay, what, what, what does it have to do with the 55 factorial? It has to do the following, that 55 factorial is a cube times this number. And so if you have a cube that is multiplied by a sum of three cubes, then it is a sum of three cubes. And of course, with the S factorial, you have always a large cubic part. You may say, oh, okay, but is this the uh, cubic free, cube free part of, uh, of uh, 55? No, it's not the case. If it can be divisible, this number n, let us say, can be divisible by 12 to the cube, and then you have something which is really the uh, part 
um, cube free part of 55 factorial. It has only 24 decimal digit, but it is not a sum of three cubes. So having some cubes help for that. And I chose uh, 55 because it is the worst case. Uh, okay. If you take 59, for example, then with 59, you have exactly the same thing, but this number is with 25 decimal digits. So it turns out that in some cases, you have a cube-free part. Again, this is divisible by 12 to the cube, that the cube-free part may be large or not. And you see, when we are around 59, we are more or less at the limit of what we can do. We expect that uh, we can go up to 60, but uh, not, uh, not clear that whether we can go to 61 or something like that. So we are more or less beside, besides the, the, the value 56, everything has been done more or less what we, what we can do up to now. So, okay. Now, <clears throat> what we want to do, we are not going to prove anything. It, it, it is not that, it's not because uh, the, we don't know anything about the density of sum of three cubes, that it's not possible to prove that S factorial is a sum of three cubes because it has a very large uh, cubic part, so it, it may be possible. In any case, we don't prove anything like that, but what we do is to get a probability model, you see like a Kramer for primes or something like that. So we try to build a decent probability model for cubes. By decent, I mean that it is consistent with experimental facts concerning the distribution of sum of three cubes. We'll explain what it is. In some way, it is exactly like in the um, uh, talk of uh, Andrew Granville yesterday. Uh, Kramer is maybe not really what we would call the decent probability model for primes, but you would rather try to avoid that uh, uh, an even number is a prime or things like that. So it would be uh, exactly the same, the same kind of thing we, we are doing. So, and then we have the following. Uh, well, we, you, you will see where it comes from, but this is just an artifact of the method. And you can really su suppress this. And essentially what it says is that almost surely, as soon as N is large enough and divisible by the first primes to the power of three, then it is a sum of three pseudo cubes. So what is important in S factorial, of course, S factorial will come into that. So in our probabilistic model, almost surely S factorial is sum of three cubes from some point onward. So uh, you see this value is uh, enough for our model to work, but uh, it, it permits to consider S factorial because S factorial is divisible by this number. Okay, so let us go now to the uh, some consequences. I will talk about consequences uh, later on. One is for worrying problem with signs. And um, uh, so it is, okay, I'll, I'll talk later about that. And also three non-negative rational cubes. I took of that at the end. So, okay, some heuristic. Heuristic, if you denote by R3 of N, the number of where to write n at the sum a cube plus b cube plus c cube with a, b, c uh, all pairwise different. And also you may allow two of them to be inside them. Th there is no big difference, you see, because as soon as you ask that two of them are equal, it means that you write n as something like 2a cube plus c cube. And the total number of representation is something which is n to the two third, so it is almost nothing. So we have that the number of representation, this works for R3 and also for R prime three, this is the same thing, is a certain coefficient gamma with, this is just because uh, you, you cannot have all the, all the cubes which are large at the same time and it, it doesn't permit you to represent a large number. So you have something which will be a bit less than 1.6, which is 0.1186. We'll see the, the importance of this, of this number later on. So what we may expect is that since the number of representation is one on average or is very small on average, then you expect that you have a Poisson distribution. That is to say that for any k, which is 
non-negative, then the cardinality of n, the number, the, the set of n such that R3 of n is equal to k uh, as a density, which is gamma k over fa k factorial e to the minus k. And so what you expect is that for those which are non-zero, which have really, which are sum of three cubes, what you expect is something which is one minus e to the minus gamma, because e to the minus gamma is just for k is equal to zero. And uh, for the one for which it is not zero, it is one minus e to the minus gamma. And it is something like about one over nine. Okay, so I would like to, to, to explain a bit it has been mentioned already, but uh, what, what is a, a random sequence? This is what I want to, 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 to talk about. So we take a probability space and we take a sequence of independent random variables with values in 0, 1. So Rademacher, I think you call that, uh, the, the probabilist would call that also uh, Bernoulli random variables. And uh, you consider then psi n to be the indicator function of a set. That is to say that to any little omega in your set, you have a family of values of psi n, and you consider the set A of little omega, which is the set of n for which psi n of omega is equal to one. And so this is the random sequence. So we are not going to keep all the time the reference to little omega, we say A, which is which has for indicator function, this psi is the random sequence associated to psi. Okay, so in uh, 1960, Erdős, I hope uh, Arkosh is happy with this, and Reni introduced a random sequence which models the cubes by choosing, you, you say that the integer n is selected with a probability, which is, what is the probability to have an integer which is around x and which is a cube? It is something like one over three x to the two third. Okay, and indeed what you have is that for almost all omega, almost surely, the number of elements in your random sequence up to x is x to one third. So this is, as regards the, the number of elements, it is a good model for cubes. Exactly like Primer will tell you that the number of primes up to x is x over log x in this model. So we, did, we consider also the random variable R3 of n, which model little r3 of n is defined by this. It's again not a big deal if you prefer to have then allow that there is something which is equal and show that this counts for almost nothing. So of course, it is this because you see, when you are saying that n is a sum of three elements a, b, c in your sequence, let us call them pseudo cubes, is a sum of three pseudo cubes, then it means that psi a of omega has to be equal to one, psi b of omega has to be equal to one, and psi c of omega has to be equal to one. And so the product is one, otherwise one of them is not a pseudo cube, then one value will be zero. So this is nice for expressing this uh, this uh, sum, uh, this uh, random. And so what they, they did, they claimed that the sequence R cube of n almost surely follows a Poisson law, exactly what we were expecting in some way, and it is almost surely true in the random model. Well, indeed, there is a, a gap which was noticed by Halberstam and Roth uh, in their proof, and uh, Halberstam and Roth filled it in the case of squares. In the general case, the proof has been completed by Google uh, using a uh, moment method, and later by Bernard Landreau giving slightly different uh, result uh, using uh, correlation inequality. We'll, we'll uh, use also this correlation uh, principle. Now there is some real problem with the weakness in this model is that the only case where we can check it with the reality is for, for squares. And sum of two pseudo squares, you can have exactly the same thing here for, uh, for uh, squares, and it will give you a slightly different gamma, but it will be also a positive density for sum of two pseudo squares. But we know that from Landau and maybe even before, Landau proved in 1909 
that sums of two squares have a zero asymptotic density. So this is not a this is not what I would call as a decent model in some way. We we have to to modify it. So for example, also if you look at uh, Bar Barucan, the computation of Barucan in uh, 68, of course it, it, it was not going too far. It stopped at something like about 360 and he found a density of to this point, which is 0 0.1105. And remember, this is interesting that it is already below. This is a decreasing function, he observes, and this is already below the uh, value which is, which would be given by the uh, the model here, which will give this 0 0.111 and so on. So we are below this. So again, even for cube, this model shouldn't be very good. This is why it was not clear to understand whether cubes, three cubes should have a positive density or not. Well, now we make some computation in 2006, rather long and uh, check that what we have is that new three of x over x, the density, if you go up to five, 10 to the 14, we did it for all the integer, is something which is a bit less than one tenth. So it is also, this is decreasing, but it, there's no contradiction here. And uh, by some modular extrapolation, it is something which is slightly a bit, a bit larger for x is 10 to the 18, and it seems to converge with something where you have maybe a four here or something like that. Okay. Okay, so the, the question is uh, the, the probability model we developed with uh, Francois Encar and Bernard Landreau in uh, 1998. So in the erdos schrenyi model, the set of pseudo cubes, which are congruent to two mod seven as a relative density one seven, relative density with respect to the cube. What I mean is that if you count them up to X, you have X cube, uh, cubic root of X divided by seven. But in the real life, no cube is congruent to two mod seven. So the question is how can we take care of the uneven distribution of cubes in arithmetic progression? So what we did, is the following, we construct, we constructed a random sequence. So what we did the following, well, we cannot take care of all arithmetic progression at once, because if you take care of all arithmetic progression, then an integer, which is a cube modulo, all the arithmetic progression is simply a cube. So we select an integer k, and with respect to this k, we build a probability model for cubes, which agrees with the distribution of cubes in arithmetical progression mod k. So what we do is the following. What we did at that time was slightly different from that, but uh, it is equivalent in some way. And uh, it's, um, it's maybe easier to present it that way. The probability that Xi, Xn with respect to k is rho of kn divided by 3n. Uh, it is not one third, sorry, it is two third here. It should be two third. Is rho kn uh, divided by three to the two thirds. So in some way we put a uh, compensation. If n is the sum of uh, three cubes mod k, then we put something which is the number of representation, uh, maybe, you, yes, well, rho kn is the number of representation of n at the cube mod k. So if n is not representable as a cube, then n will not occur in our sequence. And if n is a sum of cubes in three different ways, for example, then we'll put a weight three. So it has a nice consequence. First of, first of all, almost surely, the density of the numbers, which are sum of three elements of AK, exist and is independent of little omega. So let us call that delta K. So we have, a, and when K, we take a sequence Ks, which tends multiplicatively to infinity. Multiplicatively to infinity means that any integer q will divide Ks as soon as s is large enough. So you take this, such a sequence, and then we have a limit, whatever the sequence you choose, with only this property, we have a limit, and this limit is 
0.0999425. You see, it agrees really very well with the reality. You, you remember we were checking something which was 0 0.09993. Uh, well, so, it, and even getting a bit upwards. And also in this model, if you think you can do it for, for any power, if you, if you think, if you look at what it gives for squares, the sum of two pseudo squares have a limit density zero. Okay. So, uh, now, the, what, what, what happens with our um, first arithmetic probability model? So, now we can also show that in our model, the numbers from the arithmetic, an arithmetic progression, which are some of three pseudo cubes, they have an asymptotic density. Let us call it delta k of q a, and that when k tends multiplicatively towards infinity, then delta k of q a has a limit delta of q a. So first, of course, if you look at the number which are congruent to plus or minus uh, four mod nine then the density is zero. This is a good point because in the real life, this is exactly what happens. It's not possible to represent an integer congruent to four or five modulo nine as a sum of three cubes. And of special interest is the fact that if you take number which are divisible by the first prime factors, then the delta is of P, the, the, the density of the L element in this arithmetic progression in, in the divisible by this number, which are sum of three cubes, this density tends to one when A tends to infinity. So really in this model, it explains in some way why you see a lot of uh, uh, factorial S, which are sum of three cubes. Okay, now what in, in real life, we look at the integer which are divisible by p cube, the product of p cube when p is small. So if a is equal to one, that is to say you don't ask for anything and you have the zero point, you see zero nine 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 nine. so let us say it is one tenth. As soon as you start to put some of them, I don't, I don't have the, the result for a is equal to two here. Well, for a is equal to three, you have something which is almost half of them. If you go up to five, you have 64. If you go up to seven, and you see that very quickly, the modulus, uh, the, um, the, the density tends to one. So this is also something you have in our model, but you have it also in the real life. Uh, well, you, you cannot go too far because you see for A is equal to 13, the modulus is already larger than 10 to the 13. Okay. So now we we are we are going to make you see the the difficulty with the first uh, the first model is that you cannot get a result telling you that from some point onward s factorial will be a sum of three cubes. What you say that the density is larger and larger, but we want to do also something for s factorial. So we have to make some connection in some way because between the place where we are and k s. So we want to look at the element in this set. We take a model for the, uh, the cubes which are between S minus one factorial and S factorial, and which are divisible by the product of all the element up to the cube of the primes up to S one half log X. So you have to understand that this is really much larger than MS. The first point I already mentioned is that if you look at S factorial itself, it is a multiple of this number, but this number is rather small. Uh, you see, it is something which is exponential in S, even exponential in S to one half, where this is exponential of S log X, S factorial is exponential of X log X. So this is really pretty small. Now we take uh, KS, which will depend also on that. So of course it has to be a multiple of MS because we, we are interested in saying something for the multiple of MS. And you can choose whatever you wish, which is a multiple of MS and which is less than S minus three factorial. So you have really a large choice in that. And the result will be independent of the choice of KS. 
except that you will ask KS to, to go multiplicatively to infinity, but it's not even requested. So now we define the random sequence A, we, def we define it by blocks. So in S minus one factorial, S factorial, we say that the probability that Xi M is equal to one is rho of Ks M three M to the two third. That is to say it's exactly what we had in our arithmetical probabilist uh, model. And um, so this is a, uh, okay, so this is what, uh, what we have, and this is the correct uh, uh, m to the two-third. And so it, it, you have now the complete sequence xi m is defined. It's defined for all integer, except that the definition will change a bit whether you are in the interval s minus 1 s factorial. Okay. So now we have this, uh, we have our uh, random sequence. And um, so the sequence A is distributed in arithmetical progressions as well as the cubes. You see, if you consider uh, an arithmetic progression, KST plus H, uh, such an arithmetic progression, the case rho of KS of H is trivial, of course, there is nobody in this arithmetic progression. So we just assume that this number is different from zero, and it's not too difficult to notice that the number of cubes up to x, the number of cubes, uh, or the yeah, the number of cubes in the in the sequence in the between s minus one factorial and s factorial, which are congruent to uh, h modulo k s, is what you expect, and what you expect is just this number. Always you have the the local factor divided by s, s factorial one, one third. And so you have something which will tell you that this is just, uh, there exists delta, so that if delta, if ks is less than s factorial to the power one, one third, then you have an equivalent for that. And, uh, and now in the, in the probabilistic, in a probabilistic model, you have something which is exactly the same thing. So almost surely, now it would be almost surely, if Ks is something like uh, small times uh, S factorial N to one third, then the probability that you have the number of elements you have in this, uh, I don't know why I have, uh, uh, no, I cannot do something, sorry. So the probability that this number is, uh, looks at this number, the number of pseudo cubes, uh, the number of sum of three pseudo cubes, which are, no, pseudo cubes, sorry. The number of pseudo cubes congruent to H mod Ks is exactly distributed in the same way. This probability is very, very close to one. Okay, so now we look at, uh, we turn our attention to the sum of three pseudo cubes. So then the, you will have a singular term which is governed by the local factor, that is to say the cardinality of triple x, y, z between zero and k minus one, on which are taken modulo k, for which x cube plus y cube plus z cube is congruent to h mod k. And uh, for n in s factorial over two s factorial, we have the, the probability of r3n is equal to zero. This is very small. It is at most, at least we have a, an upper bound here, which is at most an exponential time some gamma factor and the local factor tau of ksn. Okay, and this is, this is the good order of, uh, of magnitude. Now we have the, the following thing that when you look at R3 of n, so how do we get this, uh, this result? What we do is to say that R3 of n is larger than the number of x, y, z between s minus one factorial and s factorial, which are sum of uh, three pseudo cubes. So you see that here we are just, this is because our model is uh, by block. It is easier to consider only the uh, pseudo squares, pseudo cubes, which are between 
S factorial minus one and S factorial because it is the same law that is behind. Otherwise the K will be different and you may be in difficulty, but you don't care much because if you say that already for this number, this number, you have something, then you have something here. So the probability that this R3 of n is equal to zero is at most the probability that this is equal to zero. So you are happy with that. Now you understand also where is the S factorial of a two, that if you take a number which is too close to S minus one factorial, then you don't have much margin for writing it as a sum of three pseudo cubes, which are larger than S minus one factorial. But you see that this is just really an artifact and uh, we, are, we are working on the correcting that. Okay. So now what we have is that this is the, the this probability is just at most the probability that we have all this, the <coughs> intersection of those for which uh, Psi, uh, psi y, psi uh, x, psi z is equal to zero. Okay, so this is what you what you say. You say if this representation is zero, that is to say that nobody has a representation for any, for no n. Okay, so this is fine. So now we owe to Sander Janssen a convenient upper bound for that. You see the, the problem with this is that the intersection of this, so this is fine because you can say what is the complementary set of that. Complementary set of that is just the fact that this is equal to one, that is to say that all of them are equal to one. This is fine, but probability of an intersection is not the product of the probability because you don't have independence here. And this is really the problem. And this is, by the way, a bit the problem that uh, was faced by uh, Erdos and Rini in their, in their model. So you cannot do that, but uh, Svante Janssen has a very nice upper bound with some term which takes care of the correlation two by two. So this is exactly the product, you are happy, as if they were independent, and you have some correction term, and correction term is you are looking at the intersection in some way two by two of the element for which you have one of the x, two representation where one of the x is common. So you look at all the triple, the pair of triple, which have exactly one element in common. Okay, now you have this, you know that this is fine because this, you know what is, it is one minus something and this one minus something, you can exploit it and, uh, and uh, this, you can also say something about that. So let us go to the, to the next uh, one. So what have we been doing so far? So I am not going to, 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 to give more here than to say that, that then, then we enter into some, some messy computation, but there is not, nothing really wonderful. What is fine and what is great is that this term is just an error term. It is one plus something, one plus little of one. It's not always the case with the Janssen inequality. The correlation term may be larger maybe at least of the same order of the, than this one, but here we are lucky because it is of small order. So we are really, we can consider that they are independent. We are happy with that. So I'm not going to go further into this, but just to try to summarize where we are. So where we are is the following. We, are, we choose a sequence of moduli, Ks. Ks is a multiple of ms and is less than S minus three factorial. This is for the, the running the computation, Ks has to be small, but even it is much larger than what we have where it, where it makes sense in some way, where we can compare it with the reality. But as a, in a probabilistic model, it's fine. It's fine, we can, we can define that. So we define a sequence of pseudo cubes, which is defined by, um, by blocks. And what we have is after this uh, tedious compu computation, what we have is that the probability of Rn is equal to zero is less than exponential of minus C for some constant, which is more or less the same thing at the, the gamma factor times tau Ksm. And this will depend on the 
probability or the uh, residue classes of n mod ks okay fine so now um and this is for uh, n in s factorial over 2 s factorial we have this so uh, i think we are we, we have this and what we want to show is that any integer ns which is in this set is a sum of three pseudo cubes so it turns out that uh, the, we, have, we have to work a bit on the singular term. So the singular term is multiplicative. This is nice, which is not a surprise. If you are solving a congruence, mod, a polynomial congruence, mod, uh, mod a product of uh, pairwise co-prime integers, then it is the product of the number of solutions. This is fine. So we, we expect that this will be large in our case. And uh, so we expect some of the factors to be large, the other one being not too small. Okay, no problem. There might be maybe a problem with the prime three because tau of nine and plus or minus four is equal to zero. Uh -huh. Sure. But if n is divisible by 27, and even if it is 27 times a number which is congruent to four or nine, there is no local obstruction again. For example, 27 times... 9k plus 4 is congruent to a sum of 3 cubes mod 27 times 9. So this is fine. There is no, no, no obstruction. So what we have is the following lower bound for tau p alpha of n. And it is important to have a lower bound because it occurs in, we have a mag, mm, upper bound with exponential of minus the product of the tau. Okay? So uh, it is always larger than 1 minus 2 square root of p. Of course, it is always positive for p is, uh, is at least 5. And if it is 2 and 3, we don't care because we know that 2 and 3 occurs, will occur in our problem with a, with a power 2. So of course, we can also put something here which is positive for 2 and 3, but we are not that much interested in that because alpha will be larger than 3. And when alpha is larger than 3, and uh, n is divisible by p3, then the local factor is at least 5 over 4. And this is fine because it is larger than 1. So you see that on the cubic factors, we are each time winning something which is larger than 1 and constant, 5 over 4. And for the other prime factor, we may be losing something, but not too much because this is also close to 1. Of course, it is less than 1, but it is also close to 1. So, okay. So I'm not going to, 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 to go into, into this, but you write Ks as the product of the prime which divides ms, and so they, are, they occur at the cube factor, and something which is just positive, you don't care whether they are at the cubic factor or not. You have the phenomenon I was telling you, 5 over 4 times something important here, which is the number of terms here, and the product of 1 minus 2 square root over square root of qi, but you don't have that many of them. And so tau of ks ns is larger than exponential of s to the one half with a positive s. So this is pretty large. So this is pretty large. It means the following, that when we are back to our business, if you look at the probability that ns between s factorial and 2s factorial is, a, is not a sum uh, cube, then this, this bound is exponential to minus something which is exponential of s one half. So it is really extremely small. So now if you take all the us, all the element u in s factorial over two s factorial such that ms divides u, then even the probability that one of these term is not a sum of three cubes is less than well, stupidly, the number of terms is at most s factorial, so this probability will be s factorial exponential of minus c exponential of c prime s of s one, s one half. But this is peanut s factorial compared with what you have won here. This is tremendous. You can see also that we can do something better than uh, than s one half, but uh, this is not the this is not a big problem. And the series over s of s factorial exponentials converges. 
And so again, our main theorem will follow from borel cantelli lemma. So it tells you that from some point onward, depending on little omega, all the elements which are in US for there exists some S0 depending on little omega, so that any element in this, in the union of all this set, then they are all sum of three pseudo cubes. So it's rather convincing in some way, if you, if you, if you believe in this model. So, okay, this is for the, for, for the main thing, maybe some, uh, some other things that uh, some, ah, well, now uh, the sum of integral cubes with signs. So there is something which is expected that sum of three cubes, um, every integer which is not congruent to four or five mod nine is a sum of three integral cubes with signs. We are rather far from that because in some cases you need extremely large cubes. For example, for 33, it was solved only last year uh, or, in, uh, or two years ago because uh, the smallest summons are of the order 10 to the 16. And uh, it was done by Booker. I mentioned already the name of Booker. And uh, this is where he introduced is uh, the perfection of the algorithm uh, to, to improve on the, on the greedy algorithm for looking for that. Otherwise, he, put, he, he couldn't have gone that way uh, far. But uh, there are some other uh, uh, sm small cubes between 100. There is at least one, uh, one other, which is not, uh, which is not solved. So the three integral cubes with sign. And of course, this is so seldom that uh, we don't see how to, to get some, uh, some probabilistic model for that. It's completely out of uh, the, the probabilistic model we have here. But for four integral cubes, we expect that every integer is the sum of the cubes and, uh, and uh, four integral cubes with signs. Uh, five is known, four is not known. Uh, but uh, here, with, in our model, uh, we can show that every integer is the sum of a cube with sign and three pseudo cubes. Hint, what we do is you, there is an integer you want to represent, it can be a small one. Every integer is the sum of, a, for, uh, of a four cubes. So you take an integer A and uh, you can write a family of cubes Ys, such that A plus Ys cube is in S factorial over two S factorial. And so it is divisible and is divisible by MS. You have to work a bit on that. And then it is a sum of three pseudo cubes as soon as Ys is large enough. And then you see that you can represent uh, the cubes by a, a lot of different uh, sequences with the polynomial growth and things like that. Okay. So uh, this, will, this will, will write down in the proceedings of this, uh, of this conference. Uh, I mean, this is called sometimes the easier worrying problem. And if you hear the word of worrying, well, happy birthday to you, Balu. So uh, now there's something else. If you are thinking of rational cubes, then it's a very old result by uh, Riley in uh, 1825. He showed that every positive rational number n is the sum of the cubes of three positive rational numbers. Uh, there is a, a proof by model uh, which who, who gives a very short proof in, uh, in 71. He gave a, a very short proof in two pages. Uh, and uh, then the question is also to know what can we say when we want to represent n? What can we say of the size of the, of the um, denominator? And um, so uh, one can choose the common denominator of the rational to be n square big O of n squared. This was proven by Landau and Davenport in uh, 1935, and it was published much later on. And it is in the course of this publication that model was, uh, was interested in, the, in this question. And um, now the, the, the proof is short, but the exponent is worse. Now you see what we, what we think is that ns is in uh, S factorial of a 2ms, S factorial of an ms, if we have a, an integer like that with large enough S, then ms ns is the sum of three pseudo, pseudo cubes. 
And so this is a heuristical support for the, then of course you can write NS at the sum of three pseudo cubes divided by the cube MS. And so this is a heuristical support if you make some, some computation for that, for the fact that the denominator could, should be very small because you see MS is rather small compared to, to, to NS. And so you should have something which say that N is something which is the denominator can be one over square root of log n, more or less, something like that. Okay, so I think this is this is all I had to, to say. So thank you very much, and again, happy birthday to you, Malu. Well, thank you very much, Jean-Marc. Are there uh, any questions or, of, or remarks after this nice talk? Any question? Yeah, if I have a question, if I ask. Yes, please. Uh, so, uh, is the is anything known about the generating function of uh, R three n small R three n? Oh yes, uh, uh, smaller. You see what what you, you what you have as always with the additive problems. You have something that uh, the, the 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 generating function, I mean polynomial generating function, entire series, and this this is the root for the circle method, for example. But of course, circle method for three cubes will not will not give you much. But uh, the, the 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 aim in the circle method is to write the number of representation with a main term and an error term. And uh, if you have something which you expect to be a constant or, or to be zero, uh, the error term has to be really very small. So in some way, circle method will not give you much, but uh, yes, there is, a, of course, a, a representation uh, function. Uh, mm -hmm. ah. Thank you. Thanks for the nice talk. Thank you. Other, other questions or remarks? I, I have a question. Um, suppose you take uh, Piatesky Shapiro uh, powers. Um, yeah. So uh, suppose uh, you take uh, C to be 3.1 or so. Mm -hmm. um, what is the, the de I mean, what is the expected or known density for sums of, of four uh, such uh, pseudo powers? So the, 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 the probabilistic model is, uh, is much easier. Yes. Because uh, you see, you have, you have no problem with the uh, with the arithmetic progressions. Mm -hmm. So in some way, the, the you, you can adapt the Erdős uh, the Erdős Reni model, <laughs> and it will it will tell you that if C then C is not a is not a, an integer, but what you would expect is that each time you take a number of representants which are four times C such that four uh, such, such that the, this number times C is larger than one, then you have some uh, some equivalent and this, the, the the probability model works for that and the density will be one oh yes for for the one which are representable yes because you yes. You, you will have the, the the representation function will be yeah mm -hmm. okay thank you very much other questions or remarks but what i say that it is in the probabilistic model of course it's not uh, it's not in real life Mm -hmm. In real life, this was uh, attacked by, by the way, uh, Pierre, uh, Zegal in uh, 1933, looked at the number which are now called Piatesky Shapiro number, but he introduced them even with the same notation n to the c, and uh, looked at the worrying problem for them, and showed that if you take sufficiently many of them, then you have the thing, and so circle method is working, uh, is working as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>